May the peace of God be with us all. Hello. Jesus says, wherever two or three come together in my name, I am there with them. Wherever and whenever you watch this reflection, you're coming together with others, possibly 80 to 120 others going by recent viewing figures. So while we're not in the same place or watching at the same time, we are coming together in Jesus' name. We're coming together to listen and learn together. And so I believe Jesus is with us and is forming us into the church in new ways. Welcome. We're in the first week of September, so we're in the first week of creation time, a season of creation. A season in the global church year where we pay particular attention to God's creation with wonder, but also paying particular attention to our care or lack of for God's creation. And that will shape my reflections this week and for the next five weeks. Also coming up in the next couple of weeks will be our first, first trials of reopening our church buildings. We're being very cautious because we want to keep each other safe. What we hope to do is to try a half hour of communal prayer late on Sunday afternoons, Sunday afternoons from 4 till 4.30pm. We're hopefully going to start that from Sunday the 20th of September in Hopeman Church, on the 27th of September in Duffest Kirk and the 4th of October in Spiney Kirk. Each time we'll have limited numbers so people will need to book in advance. All of you who are on the congregational members lists will receive a newsletter in the next week or so by email or in, your, in the post explaining some of the details. And we'll also share that information on Facebook and the website and wherever we can. It is just a small six week trial of reopening our buildings for communal prayer initially. And we know that we'll learn from that for other for other times and we know it won't be possible or even safe for everyone to come together. It will also be different from these reflections and different from what we're used to on a Sunday morning. So these reflections online will continue and by the phone lines so no one will be excluded and will continue to be church in whatever way works best. And if you want more hymns, can I recommend Keith Community Radio, KCR's Church, on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock on 107.7 FM and at other times online at kcr.fm. That's restarting throughout September. So KCR Church on a Sunday morning at 10 a.m. comes highly recommended. And Church at KCR also links me beautifully into another introduction from this week, we have a ministry student training with us from now until April. David Sim um, is, will be a familiar voice to many of you who have listened to Church at KCR. And now I introduce you to David, who will introduce himself and also read for us this morning. David Sim, our new ministry student. Good morning, my name is David Sim. I used to work in IT and computing, but these days I'm a second year candidate for ministry, studying at Highland Theological College. I live in Kinloss and well, love getting out into the wonderful countryside and coastline that we're blessed with around our area. I'm married to Heather, who's a church organist and piano teacher, and I have a 21 year old daughter Larissa who works as a personal trainer down in Glasgow. Well as well as walking I like to go dog walking. That's completely different to normal walking as we have a cocker spaniel who likes to spend most of his time sniffing each individual blade of grass in turn. 
I've been involved in community radio for a few years, most recently working with others on the KCR church service on Sunday mornings. And finally, my main hobby is being an amateur scone critic, sampling plain fruit and cheese scones at every opportunity. I hope we'll have the opportunity to get to know each other a bit better over the next few months. This morning's reading comes from Matthew, chapter 18, reading verses 15 to 20. We join Jesus teaching the disciples. If your brother sins against you, go to him and show him his fault. But do it privately, just between yourselves. If he listens to you, you have won your brother back. But if he will not listen to you, Take one or two other persons with you, so that every accusation may be upheld by the testimony of two or more witnesses, as the scripture says. And if he will not listen to them, then tell the whole thing to the church. Finally, if he will not listen to the church, treat him as though he were a pagan or a tax collector. And so I tell all of you, what you prohibit on earth will be prohibited in heaven, and what you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. And I tell you more, whenever two of you on earth agree about anything you pray for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, I am there with them. Amen. Thanks to the Lord for his word. Thank you and welcome to David. Life brings us into conflict with others. Sometimes we just irritate each other. Sometimes conflict can be much more serious. It can be found in bullying, in different kinds of abuse, in racism, in discrimination because of gender, sexuality or disability. Sometimes conflict will be expressed in violence sometimes in being very unfair. And all of that applies at a personal level, but also within communities and nations and internationally. None of this is new. And in our reading today, we hear Jesus offering his followers an approach to try and deal with conflict. When someone sins against you, the first step would be to try to deal with it privately. Often we hurt others without even realising it, so we can explain to one another the pain or disappointment that is felt. That may be enough if we listen and learn. It's not always easy to take on board that we've done something wrong. It's certainly not always easy or safe to approach someone who's hurt us to tackle them about it. So if that one-to-one -one has not worked, or I would argue isn't safe, then the suggestion is that a few more people are involved. This is still a private gathering, but it brings in others to listen. It brings in more wisdom. That may be enough to bring reconciliation and healing to the relationships. Jesus says that if the relationship can't be restored in those smaller gatherings, then it's time to involve the wider church household. And believers originally met in households. Hurt has been caused, harm has been done, and it needs wider wisdom and support to listen, learn, and find a way forward together. Finally, if someone will not listen to the church or to the wider community, Jesus says to treat them as though they were an outsider or a tax collector. That's where Jesus' way becomes even more challenging, because Jesus spent his ministry going to meet outsiders and tax collectors. Jesus sought them out. He learned from the Canaanite woman. He healed a Roman officer's slave. He touched those that others thought were unclean. He told a story with a Samaritan as a good guy. And as for tax collectors, Jesus called Matthew to be his disciple and ate with Matthew and his pals. He invited Zacchaeus out of a tree and invited himself 
to eat with him too. And Matthew and Zacchaeus got close to Jesus and learnt his ways of fairness and love. So if someone is not listening and learning from the wider community, Jesus says we're to treat them as if they were an outsider or a tax collector. So we are to seek them out and listen to them. We're to invite them close and eat with them. We're to engage with them so that they can find healing and transformation, learning Jesus' ways of hope. We are asked to make the community wider, to create a space where we are all accountable, to create a space where everyone can listen and learn and be changed, to restore relationships and build a new community. That is enormously difficult, but we don't do it alone. A few verses later, Jesus reminds us yet again that he will be with us. Where two or three come together in my name, I am there, Jesus said. When we try to restore relationships, Jesus is with us. When we listen or are asked to listen, Jesus is with us. When we make our community wider, seeking healing and transformation, Jesus is with us. Now that's all challenging enough in a context of households and communities. But I think it also applies when we consider ourselves in relation to our global neighbours, where there is no shortage of feelings and a huge need to listen and learn. And I think it also applies when we consider ourselves as part of creation. We are in relationship with the rest of creation, but we cause much damage and pain. I think there's a huge need to listen and learn. And also to be part of communities seeking healing and transformation for creation. Many of those most hurt by our actions don't have a human voice to speak up with. They are fellow creatures whose habitats are destroyed, polluted or affected by climate change. But there are people who act as the one or two others who speak up and bring deeper wisdom. And many of those most hurt by our actions do speak up and have been speaking out for a very long time. Many of our sisters and brothers on this planet have been speaking up for years. Jesus' approach reminds us of how important it is that we listen as individuals and as church households. Within our damaged creation, there's no shortage of voices to listen to. And many voices have tried the private conversations and the small private meetings of leaders and governments. But nothing has come of those discussions. So many voices have had to reach out to the whole human household, to the whole world, to anyone who will listen. For example, 11 years ago, this is what the cabinet of the Maldives did to make us listen. It had all the trappings of a formal cabinet meeting, except that the government ministers were 20 feet underwater and wearing scuba gear. The president of the Maldives Islands and 13 other officials took their seats at a table on the seafloor below the surface of a lagoon. Discussions were limited to hand signals and white boards. As bubbles floated up from their face masks, the cabinet signed a document calling on all countries to cut their carbon dioxide emissions. The ministers predict that if the pace of greenhouse gas emission and rising sea levels is not curbed, most of their country would disappear beneath the waves of the Indian Ocean within a century. This is a challenging situation and we want to see that everyone else is also um, occupied as much as we are and would like to see that people actually do something about it. If Maldives cannot be saved today, we do not feel that there is much of a chance for the rest of the world. That was in 2009. Within the church, our partners have been bringing issues to our attention for decades. This is a Christian Aid poster for 2010. And I can still visualise another Christian Aid advert that shows a woman standing in flood water looking at me and saying, could you please turn your heating down a bit? 
Partners approach us privately in his church household saying, please listen, please change, because we are being hurt. And if the private and quiet approaches don't work, then the community must get wider, hoping that we can listen and learn new ways of hope. Those wider voices should make most of us uncomfortable. They may be familiar voices of wisdom like David Attenborough in his 90s. They may be the voices of angry youngsters fearful for the world's future. Life brings us into conflict with others and Jesus offers an approach to try and restore relationships. Privately with the church and ultimately widening communities, all with Jesus' promised presence. We can help hold each other accountable and learn God's ways of healing, hope and new life together. Our modern lifestyles also bring us into conflict with the rest of creation, with terrible effects on many human neighbours around the world and into future generations. Our sisters and brothers have come to us in many ways, privately, through the church, through wider society. We've been told about the damage being done. We may sometimes bear witness to the damage being done. We will find others at great fault in all of this. Corporations, governments and systems all have a lot to answer for. So we have to engage with them trying to get them to listen and learn, to change so that healing and new life are possible. But I think most of us are also at fault. We have a lot to answer for in our lifestyles and consumption. And we've had voices telling us about these things for decades, in our news, through Christian aid, in our churches, and now through our children and grandchildren. So we need to listen and learn. We are asked to use the wisdom of others. We are asked to learn God's ways of healing, hope and new life. And through it all we need the grace of Jesus, who still invites us all to come close alongside others. Jesus invites us to be changed, to try to live differently. And so Jesus invites us into hope, Hope for restoration of relationships and a renewed creation. And Jesus will always be with us when we try, when we try to live in God's ways. For Jesus says, where two or three come together in my name, I am there with them. Amen. I invite you to share in prayers for creation time. Let us pray. God who makes us with the earth, God who gives us to the world, God with us in our struggles, hear our fears and needs, hold our hand as we walk as you walk beside us, advise, encourage and guide us. We pray for the world, for all those struggling to get harvest in and those who aren't able to grow enough for their needs. For all those affected by COVID-19 in illness and loss and those affected by lockdowns in lives and livelihoods. For all people, creatures and plants damaged by pollution, by climate change and by other human actions. For all those living with oppression and violence who aren't able to live life in all its fullness. God with us, hear our fears and needs. Hold our hand as you walk beside us. Advise, encourage and guide us. We pray for the church, for church households unable to safe, safely meet together and for all those gathering in different ways. For all our sisters and brothers speaking and acting to bring your hope and love. For us to open our hearts and minds to hear the voices that hold us to account. 
for everyone gathered through these reflections, known and unknown to us. God with us, hold our fears and needs, hold our hand as you walk beside us, advise, encourage and guide us. We pray for ourselves, whose needs you know better than we do. We pray for us to listen to you, Jesus, and to learn your ways. We know our need for comfort in our fears and losses. We also need you to challenge our lifestyles and consumption. And we bring our deepest concerns and wildest hopes to you now in a time of silence. God with us, hear our fears and needs, hold our hand as you walk beside us, advise, encourage and guide us. Amen. And now may the blessing of God, loving creator, living son, sustaining spirit, be with us, transforming us and changing the world, this day and always. Amen. Our hymn today is one recorded for Advent 2016 in Duffus Kirk, but it's a prayer of longing for reconciliation, for reconciliation for ourselves, our world and all of creation with God, through Jesus coming to be with us as he promises. So it's here Join in if you wish, CH4273. O come, O come, Emmanuel. We sing of our hope for Jesus coming to bring reconciliation. O come, O come, God with us. Amen. 